This electric bike from Engui, the T14, has it almost all. It is foldable, it has a front, middle and rear suspension, a 350 watt motor with a top speed of 33 km an hour, and you can take somebody on the back seat. Plus, on top of that, it's only 599, so what's the catch? That's what I will tell you in this video. For those who follow Angui, this model, the T14, might look familiar and that is because it's some sort of an upgraded version of the now discontinued X5 and the X5S models. This time it features a 350 watt brushless motor with a peak performance of 680 watts, a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery that results in a range of 35 km in the electric mode or 80 km in the pedal assist mode. There's also a top speed of 33 km an hour, but more on that later. From a durability and build quality point of view, I have nothing to complain. The aluminum alloy frame was much appreciated, but it does miss a transmission system, making you pedal like crazy at its top speed. Luckily, it's super easy and comfortable to ride on the pretty good bike roads here in the Netherlands. And in addition, the 14-inch wheels themselves are 5.5cm thick, which gives it a smooth, stable ride and certain rigidity and confidence on rough terrain. It's not really a fat tire e-bike, but definitely has some strong looks. The T14 is, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, a foldable e-bike. Both the handlebar and frame can be folded, resulting in the possibility to easily put the bike in the trunk of your car or take it out and start riding it within seconds. I am myself 1m88 and the height adjustable seat and the handlebars give you complete control over the comfort level, but it does make taller people look a tiny bit funny on this small bike. Reaching the stated maximum speed of 33 km an hour is a little bit of a challenge despite the fact that it has a 350 watt motor, which makes it on both occasions also illegal in many countries across the EU. The maximum speed is rather 28 km an hour in the fully electric mode. Unfortunately, there is no cruise control, but what it does have is an incredible range. On paper, it is stated as 80 km, but that's in an ideal scenario. With my 1m88, 80 kg of weight and the good bike roads over here in the Netherlands, along with normal weather conditions like today, 60 km of range is more reasonable and in the fully electric mode, I got around 25 to 28 km of range. To charge the 48 volt battery from zero to full took me nearly 7 hours, reasonable enough in case you want to charge it while being at work. Just as with many other e-bikes that we've tested here on the channel, check it out here in the top right corner, the battery on this e-bike is removable too, making the bike a whole lot less heavy than the 31 kilograms when the battery is included. The maximum payload is only 100 kg though, despite its strong looking frame, which is a strange thing to see as with many other e-bikes from China, this is usually 120 or 150 kg. Even though it's listed as 100 kg, taking someone on the back seems to be no problem. On the bike we find front and rear double disc brakes for some powerful braking, but resulting in comparable results to other e-bikes that we've tested, around 5 meters at 25 km an hour. For keeping you safe, Engui has done some things right. There's a horn and a bright LED headlight and strong brakes. But it's missing some crucial safety elements like a tail light and it's also missing reflectors between the spokes. The T14 is rather or still equipped with a basic display. It only shows you very functional stuff like for example a battery indicator without any additional information unfortunately. And if you rotate it one step further you will enable the bright LED headlight. There are a few more things that I would like to discuss, namely the speed limit, the shock absorbers and the mud guards. Regarding the speed limit, usually with e-bikes from China, you can easily unlock the speed limit. But so far I haven't found a way yet. In case I do find a method, go over to the comment section because I will make a pinned comment over there with the steps that you have to take. And in case there's no comment from me, I would love to see a comment from you. What is your favorite feature of this bike? Let me know in the comments below. Secondly, the shock absorbers. They are doing an excellent job. Along with the thick tires, they evenly smooth out bumps in the road and help to make the occasional off-road trip more comfortable. 
And last but not least, the mud guards. It's nice that I included these, but they are made from plastic though, diminishing the more premium look and feel from the bike itself. And interestingly, they do sell some accessories for many of their models, but not a taillight or any T14 parts yet. In case you do want to pick one up, go over to the description of the video because I will leave a link to the webshop where I got mine from. Now in case you do get yours, it comes in this huge box and basically already pre-assembled. You need around 10 minutes to fully assemble the bike. And after removing all of the styrofoam and the protective foam and the, and, and the cable binders, I only had to install the handlebar, which was super easy. Then I inserted the seat post. I installed the pedals, both left and right, and it's basically ready for its first spin. There's one thing that I noticed during the unboxing, and that is that the styrofoam was pressing so hard that the back seat, the cushion over there, had some white marks or residue from the styrofoam. And that's something that I tried to clean, but it didn't work out unfortunately. So I hope yours will arrive in a slightly better state. All in all, for 500 euros, I think you have a pretty interesting e-bike. It's fun, it's comfortable and cheap. And yes, it does miss some basics like a more comprehensive display or the cheap mudguard, but it, those are just minor things. Overall, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck and it's something that you can definitely consider if you bike a lot in the city or you know you commute like a last mile commute from the train station to your work for that it's perfect for longer distances i wouldn't advise it but this bike of course has a different target group and so far i really enjoyed riding this bike there's another bike that is super interesting for longer distances it's this one over here so go check it out because we already reached the end of this video thanks so much for watching Give it a like and subscribe in case you want to see more videos so that I see you in the next one.